Okay, Bernadette, she can see and hear. Awesome, Bernadette, welcome. Michelle can hear. Okay, good. So, Todd, I think you're good to go. I mean, so why don't we get going? Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're working through some, uh, shall we say, technical challenges, but uh, that will not stop us today from delivering what we know is a uh, just a tremendous webinar to all of you. Uh, my name is Todd McDonald. I am one of the senior partners at Alera Group, and uh, we are the preferred broker for the CCUA, and just delighted to be here and delighted to bring you what is the fourth edition of a health and wellness webinar. Uh, this one this morning is about managing voices in your head, creating balance and equanimity. And we're just uh, thrilled to, uh, to bring this to you again this morning. Uh, as far as Alera, we're just delighted with the longstanding relationship we've had with the CCUA. I know many of you are clients through Mike McKenna and his firm. And Mike was, uh, uh, became part of our firm back in uh, 2019 and delighted to have him. And in the spirit of Alara, in the spirit of Mike and his team and Casey, uh, he came to me and said, why don't we start to work on this relationship collaboratively, Todd? Let's start to infuse uh, additional folks and more energy and things of that nature. And I think we've um, done a pretty good job the last couple of months and we'll continue to do that. And uh, again, our mission is to provide value, to create uh, awareness on certain relevant subject matters and so forth. And many of you may simply just not be familiar with Alera as a company. It's not a household name. We recognize that. But in a very unique way, we happen to be the 17th largest insurance company in the country and the 11th largest independent. We've got about 2,000 employees, 90 offices around the country. And I only say that because we have a national scope, a local presence, and the relationship that was started with CCUA through Mike and his team continues on in the very same fashion but folks like myself and others now have the pleasure to join in and lean in on this relationship. And again, our mission is really to provide value to all of you. We've got an exciting agenda today. Uh, before I introduce our, our guest speaker, uh, I just wanna let you know that a tremendous amount of effort goes into this and there's a whole team that gets involved on the CCUA side, on our side, certainly our guest speaker, Kip and Lisa and their team, uh, so we've, we've put a lot of, uh, shall we say, preparation into this, and hopefully uh, technology will prevail as well this morning. But uh, delighted, delighted to have you. I would ask uh, in my own special way, if possible, uh, if folks can be on camera, we'd welcome that. Certainly be available to speak. Uh, if you don't know, Kip, you're going to be into, uh, in for an engaging, engaging uh, hour, hour and 20 minutes here today. So we'd ask for participation at the highest level. Uh, to make this something that uh, you walk away with saying, boy, that was of tremendous value. We enjoyed it and we had some great takeaways. So with that in mind, let me introduce Kip Hollister. Uh, in the spirit of full disclosure, uh, I wanted to introduce her in the full fashion and give an entire bio on her, but that would have absorbed what appeared to be about an hour of our time. She's an accomplished woman. Uh, she started at Hollister Sapping in 1988 and has grown that company uh, to one of the region's uh, premier recruiting firms. And then she went on to kind of follow her passion and created a business and culture that thrives, which ultimately led to the development of Hollister Institute in 2015. And the Hollister Institute supports individuals and teams through customized programming designed to enhance productivity while also building conscious cultures. Kip's leadership platform is all about being real. And she is a frequent keynote speaker on topics including resident leadership, executive presence, and the power of self-awareness. So we are simply delighted to have Kip join us this morning, and I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Todd. And thank you, CCUA, for having me. I know, oh my gosh, Casey and Dawn, who comes to meditation on a weekly basis with me, and even Mike McKenna. So I'm just thrilled to be here to serve you. So a couple of things. This is the most awkward, position to be in when I'm talking to a black screen. So as Todd just said, I don't care how you look. If you could just, in all your vulnerability, in all your authenticity, put your on, I'm just going to make that one less request, it will really serve you and it'll serve me in serving you. So, you know, I just really, that's, that's just one of the things because here's the deal. How many of you right now are so zoomed out? Like, 
this is what like I am I know that I'm zoomed out right I mean you, you your day starts and it's just a nightmare <laughs> to look at communicating through zoom and one of the things that I know to be true is that every single person and organization right now is moving into a new paradigm would you all agree I mean we have got to lead differently and part of what is happening in our world right now and in our companies is that because we're not connected, it's causing more dissonance, it's causing heightened stress, causing more breakdown in communication. And I wonder if you all agree with that. So the request I have as well for this hour is that, um, that you're really present. And when I say present, you know, I know that you might have kids in the background or dogs in the background, but this is meant to be an engaging, um, an engaging time with you. And so it means turning off your other, you know, computer screens, your other video, your phones, and out of this, I always say, what you put into something is what you get out of it, right? And I think right now we got to figure out how to be in this virtual world. So this is why I'm really here to serve you guys today. So when you think about, when you think about this title, it's kind of interesting, right? Managing the voices in our head. I mean, that sounds a little esoteric. However, what I know is that there are three conversations going on head on a daily basis. The first conversation is this conversation in our head, okay? Our thoughts do not shut off. Our thoughts run 24-7 even when we're sleeping. The second conversation is the conversation with each other, right? So, you know, you go from one Zoom meeting to the next and you are connecting with people on a screen and we need to learn how to do this better. And so that's the second conversation, is just being in the conversation, listening for data. The third conversation, and I'm going to tell all of you, this is a conversation that is going to make or break you as a human being and as a leader. And it's called the conversation in the space. So what the heck does that mean? It means when I'm on Zoom with you, there's energy going back and forth. And it's what is not seen, right? It's kind of like, it's not the words, it's what's beneath the words, it's in the space. And this is the conversation that if you don't get good at it, it is going to inhibit not only your own self-awareness, but your connection with others, and it will lower innovation and creativity. And so this is what we're going to talk about today. So where we're going to double click, Lisa, if you could um, move to the next slide. And I, hey guys, I am inviting you to be on camera. You're going to get so much more out of this. And I just, uh, here's my message is that when we're not connected <laughs> face to face, we lose a lot of our ability to read that space. So if you go to the next slide, Lisa, that'd be great. Okay. So Hollister Institute, Todd, talked talk to you about it. The acronym that we live with is, say, is, is real, okay? So I am all about being real. I think authenticity and leadership is really needed right now. Where we're going to double click today is on the E, emotions and engagement. Because I surmise that if we are not in our emotions and engaged with one another, we will lower our ability to really grow ourselves and our organizations. So now, Lisa, we still can't put people in rooms, right? It looks like that we don't have that ability, so okay. apologies so, for that. Okay, so right now I'm having to pivot with all of you. So, um, and, and Lisa, I just want to introduce Lisa. Without Lisa, I would be a technological nightmare because I don't do this stuff well. <laughs> so I'm being vulnerable with you. I'm much more of an engager in live person. Um, but what we do want to say is that since you can't go into rooms, um, I am going to request that we use the chat function. 
And so I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to have you do little exercises and then we'll open it up for engaging conversation, I trust, so that we can move some of the energy today um, with how you might be feeling, okay? So that's where we're gonna double click because your thoughts and your emotions create your now reality. And that's really what we're going to be working on because where we get inhibited is the thoughts that run in our head. And we'll go, we'll go through that in a moment. Okay, Lisa, if you could take it to the next. So here's a question I wanna ask all of you, all 42 of you that are on this call right now. On a scale of one to 10, one being horrible and 10 being phenomenal, how are you feeling right now, today? As you look at your day, as you look at what's going on, as you look at what's gonna come down the pike, what, what, where are you at right now emotionally? Okay, we got some fives, we got seven, six, keep it coming, okay. Seven, eight, six, boom, boom, boom. All right, so right now, the people that have responded, we're moving, we're, we're between a five and a seven, so I'm give us as a collective, right? As a collective that's on this call, probably right now, you know, an average of six of, of how you're feeling emotionally. So let's talk about emotions. How many of you just love the fact that now we are in the emotional intelligence space in our businesses? Would you all agree? I don't know how many of you are leading companies, but I lead a company and it's exhausting. <laughs> Why? because we have to we have to deal with the emotions first right you can't just go into a meeting today and go to the agenda it's not going to work and so now it's like wait how do i open up the kimono go with someone's emotions and get the job done right i i you know i coach a lot of ceos who are saying how can we keep performance management going when people are in breakdown you know, 70% of us right now are heightened stress. We all have stress. So the question is, what do we do with all these emotions? Lisa, if you go to the next slide. So here's, here are our emotions. So now all of us are forced into this emotional space. I call it also the energy, energy space because every emotion is energy. And there's no good, bad, right, wrong emotions. They're just emotions. So part of what we got to accept right now in our lives is embracing all emotions. So I grew up a minister's child, preacher's kid in Burlington, Vermont. And I grew up not thinking that anger was something that was good, right? So when even when I opened 1988, when I was 26 years old, I didn't know how to channel some frustration or anger. So I would just repress it. But anger is an emotion, just like joy is an emotion that we need to be able to name so that we can channel it, especially now. So when we think about how we show up in our companies and how our people show up in our organizations or in our families or in our school systems, all of the emotions are all over the board. And as you can see, just coming on this call, you know, we got work to do, right? You know, because we're kind of hovering between a six and an eight for those of you who responded. And so what you're putting out energetically is always what's going to come back to you. All right. So I want you right now. This is where a um, little exercise comes in. I want you to think of an experience that you have going on right now that's bringing you some frustration. Okay. So you're kind of frustrated and... It, 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 it ruminates in your mind, right? It ruminates in your mind. So your thoughts, what are your thoughts about this situation? And what are your emotions about this situation? And I want you to take a moment and I want you to write it down, like, like write down what the, what, the, what the subject is and the story behind the subject, okay? So the more color you put to this, the better it is. And while you're writing, I'll just give you an example in my life right now, um, or recently. I just hired a new CFO. And my new CFO, um, I said, I would like you to reach out to my former CFO 
because he has the keys to the kingdom and he knows where everything is. And my current, my new CFO said, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to. I thought I'll figure it out. So a few weeks goes by and I say again, now this is like my third time of saying this. I'm like, could you please reach out to see it? It would be so helpful. And I was really frustrated. I was in my mind here. So here's my thoughts. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, did I hire the wrong person? Why is he not calling this person? So there's my story. Okay. So it's what happened and the story behind it. I'm going to give you like a, a minute to write that story down. So really do it because if not, you might as well go off this call because it's not, this is where the engagement piece comes in. So I want you to just write that story down and look at your thoughts and look at your emotions, okay? Because then it will make sense as we move forward. So take a couple of minutes to just do that right now. And maybe, you know, just to give me some feedback when you, you know, in the chat, if you're complete and your story's written, you just like, or, or, you know, maybe you, I don't know, Lisa, can they, if they're, if, uh, if their videos aren't on, can they I'm do it? Trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I think people are having a hard time putting their videos on. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Thank so I'm God. trying. Gosh, yeah, that makes yeah, me yeah. Feel better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think people are having a hard time. So I'm trying to figure out a way to make that okay. happen. Casey, I'm, if you're I, on, if I, you're able to try to put your video on now, I just made you a co-host. Is Casey on here? Oh, that's great. Oh, she's, she's not able to. So. Stop video. Oh, I'm so glad to know that. Because you guys, I was going to say, you guys, maybe we reschedule this because <laughs> I mean, I am just I'm talking here about about how we manage virtually and 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 there's okay, so the tools aren't showing as they normally. Yeah, so it's it's okay. where, well, so they're just seeing where the yeah, okay. here. So we're, we're working okay. on it. So okay. Um, hey, you know what? We're just gonna go with the flow. This is what I do, right? This is called conscious leadership. When Everything that was supposed to go a certain way doesn't go the way it is meant to, which, by the way, is how it's been since March, right? Think about how we're leading. We can't, none of us have a plan. There's so much uncertainty and, uncertainty and we're amidst so much groundlessness, which is what's causing the disconnect. So, okay, um, all folks able to unmute and speak. Oh, that's, that was just a question oh, for me. Oh, okay, yep. well, yes, <laughs> anyone can, un yes, anyone can unmute and speak. So you now have your stories written, yes? I'm just going to assume that you do. Okay, so I want to, I want to talk about, um, let's see, before, I, I want you to now look at your stories and I want you to underline the data. So by data, I mean, what are the facts? So, you know, the guy's a jerk is actually not a fact, right? That's not data, that's your emotions. That's how you are interpreting that guy. So data is, I open my cup. So underline all of the data. And then I want you to circle all of the emotions, right? So in this exercise, I'm asking you, what are you thinking about? And what are your, and where are you feeling? And where are your emotions? So here's my question. And I would like, you know, a couple of you to just come off your, um, come unmute yourself and, 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 see if we can have a conversation with a few of you. Are you noticing anything? Like, does anybody have all facts? 
And if you have all facts, that's incredible. <laughs> so how many of you have mostly emotions that are feeding this frustration you have and this story that's going on in your, in your, in your mind? Okay, great. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing. I have all emotions and no facts. Do you all hear that? Usually, Casey, what do you got? Okay, 50-50, I thought she was going to speak. Okay, so some have 50-50. So here's what I want to say about emotions. So Lisa, if you could pull up the slide. Sorry guys, this, okay, so yeah, and so the next slide. So here's the thing with our emotions. Our emotions, there's this, there's this baseline of neutrality that we all have. So think about when you woke up this morning, okay? Hopefully you had a good night's sleep and you didn't have any nightmares. That's your baseline where you're coming out of a sound rest and your emotions, there are no trigger points for you yet, okay? Until you turn on the news or you check your cell phone hopefully that is not right next to you, or you have a conversation with, with, and all of the sudden, your emotions kick in and your thoughts kick in. So you start thinking, right? You start thinking even about, oh my gosh, I got this you know, webinar that I signed up for, I don't feel like going, and so now I have a thought and there's a negative emotion attached to that thought which is, by the way, what I just had you guys write a story about, right? Something that's kind of frustrating you and overwhelming. So the line of neutrality is just where your, your set point is before something happens. And then there's something that happens that triggers a thought in your mind and it connects that thought with the emotion. And so Lisa, if you add beneath the line, so beneath the line is when I have a thought Right? So I had a thought about my CFO and all of a sudden I'm in my head and the voice in my head is saying, oh my gosh, I gotta have this conversation. I'm not sure this is going, to, I, don't, I don't know if this is going to be right. And my mind kicks in and I get a thought in my stomach. I don't know if your examples, if that's how you feel. And that would be below the line. So now my emotions are disconnected. Then if you go up to the next one, Lisa, and then above the line is where I'm actually anticipating some enthusiasm, right? Like right now, I am having a great time. I'm on Squam Lake in New Hampshire. I'm on vacation other than serving you right now, which is also a vacation. And I am feeling really grateful. And so I'm above the line emotionally. So this is, this is where you want to look at your story and you want to look at huh, what are the thoughts and what are the emotions that I'm feeling about this situation? Does anybody want, does anybody have a, an aha right now to share before we move ahead? Um, I would love to, you know, whether it's in chat or whether it's live, I just want to know you're with me because now you can't, we can't go in the chat rooms. We can't, I can't see you. So I'm working, I'm kind of, Pet, you know, paddling upstream. And so is anybody seeing that, oh my gosh, this story, there's a story going in my head from my thinking that's emotionally connecting me. And then I'm it below the line. Kip, do you see some, um, there's some information oh. in the chat. Oh, good. Okay. Yep. Is there, so okay. Aaron says, I have more emotion than facts. Um, right. There's a question, what does it mean when all the emotions are below the line? Good. Okay, yeah. good. We're gonna get there. Okay, great. So what does it mean when, this is beautiful, because what it means when all the emotions are below the line. See, this is what we're going to, you're going, I love that you asked that, and um, we're going to get to that point, because remember what I said, oh, hi, Karine, yay, your video works, I'm so excited, welcome. <laughs> Okay, so, so here's what I want to say about 
your thoughts. We have 60 to 75,000 thoughts that run through our head on a daily basis. Okay, so that's a lot of thoughts going. Do you know that 85% of those thoughts are negative? Just think about that for one minute. 85% of the thoughts that go on in this little mind of mine are negative. Now, those thoughts feed your emotions and they create your now reality every day, all day. So look at the thoughts with your frustrating little episode you have. And I want you to say, did you have those thoughts yesterday, those same thoughts? Did you have them three weeks ago? Did you have them two months ago? Because these thoughts that get repeated become our belief systems. So a belief system is just a thought I continually think. So look at me in my situation, okay? Let's go back to me. Here I am thinking, oh my gosh, I just hired a new leader. And uh-oh, you know, is it the right, you know, he's not, he's not reaching out for help. Wait, is he coachable? You know, I coach people. Wait a minute, what is going on? So I'm now in my negative stress loop thinking, okay? That's below the line. So Deb, when you asked if you're always below the line and we'll get there in the future, but I'm gonna answer you right now so that, that you can anchor this in, it's the consciousness. It's just being conscious that I'm below the line. There's nothing wrong with being below the line. But here's what we do. If we are below the line, it becomes a habit. Do you know people in your life, and I know it's no one on this screen, but people in your life that constantly are complaining? Or they're like, when is this gonna end? Or what's going to happen? Or, oh my gosh, ugh, I gotta homeschool my kids and I, it's gonna go into 2021. We can't control the circumstances or conditions, but what you can control are your thoughts. Because here's the fact about your thoughts. You have thoughts, but your thoughts are not based in anything but your interpretation. I'm gonna say that again. Your thoughts, you have thoughts, but you are not your thoughts. And you get to consciously choose the thoughts that you're going to think moment to moment to moment. And the moment you start choosing thoughts that are above the line, that will connect you with a more positive emotion is when you are moving from the subconscious because 85% of the time we are unaware because it's, we're conditioned to think and emote and be who we are right now. By the time you're 35 years old, your pattern into a way of being from the conditioning of your upbringing and all of that. And right now on this call, if you're having an aha, congratulations. Because what you see, if you can go, to, um, Lisa, to the, if you can go to the next slide, that would be great. Want to? See, here's, here are all of the, the scale of emotions. Is it, is it all the way down, Lisa? Is that, it looks like it, we're losing a few, but maybe not. Um, the scale of emotions, emotions are energy, okay? So there's no right, there's no right, wrong, good, bad emotion, but it's the awareness that, oh my gosh, I'm frustrated over and over and over again about the same problem. Because when you're aware that your emotions are below the line, you're, you're actually alerting the conscious mind to say, wait, I have a choice here. So I have a conscious choice as to how I am going to view this from my commitment to what I wanna be about. And Lisa, if you could go to the next slide, that would be great. So this is how we get in story land. So I just described to you, I had you all write a story. I had you underline the facts and the kind of the, the story you know, behind it. And usually when I do this, people usually have mostly emotions and very few facts, which means you have power. You have power to shift this. 
And so looking at this, this is what I call the kind of story land, but it also creates this stress loop, right? And this is why we're stressed out as human beings, because we, the power of the mind is so powerful, we're so unaware of it because it's 85% subconscious. We're on automatic pilot day in, day out until you step back and you say, wow, this is so cool. I have a negative thought, negative emotion, but I don't need to go there with it. Okay. So, so this, this is how you create your reality. And it's, and it's, it, it is imprinted in your brain and your brain then becomes a computer database. It's a computer database of what you already know. So when you have a thought, your thought is never in the present moment. It's always coming from a past experience and emotion. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Just speak right now or we'll move on, but you know, put it in chat or, um, I guess you can't raise your hand, right? So <laughs> People should be able to raise their hand. And I do think everyone should have the ability now to turn on their cameras and unmute themselves. So hopefully. Um, oh, well, that, that would be great because we could yes. really have a conversation about this. Because here is where you think about this and you think about every single person on this call is a leader. Okay. We are leaders of our life. And you get to you get to choose like in this moment what kind of impact do you want to have today i don't care if you're working from home so those around you at home if you're back in the office how is your energy impacting every single person around you and how is the energy of others impacting you and yes this is a glass half full concept for sure However, you know, I think one of the issues people have, and this is why I'm so crazy about this topic, is that we think that when we're below the line, we're bad, okay? Or I'm going to get fired. Like there's a lot of fear in the space right now. I know, you know, of my 60 employees, one of the things that I always ask when I say, how are you doing really? there's fear that they're going to get laid off, okay? So that impacts how they show up and occur to me because I'm kind of saying, are you awake? Are you here? And here I am not getting that they have the story going in their head that they're going to get laid off because they look at their production and they look at the results and there is not, there's a gap right there. So how can that employee of mine bring their whole self to work if I don't free them from having that emotion? right and so when we're below the line it's really important to name it name it to each other name it in a meeting and this is when you think about that third conversation that's the most important it's a conversation in the space how many of you have had a meeting this week and you have read the energy in the room with someone on the call that totally didn't agree and shut down and was like this and they might have said yes. Oh, okay. Yep. I, yep. No, I got that. But you know, they're not. You're not connected at all, right? Because right now we need more connection than ever, which is why I'm doing this work. Because if we get what's going on in my head that I'm making up, and I can have safety in a room, even in a virtual room with my boss or with my team, and be able to name it. It's naming it that frees it. Because you can't just, like, we can't just say to people, oh, you know, be in the glass half full. Let's face it, we're in the middle of incredible stress right now, all of us. And we have to first lean in to how we're all feeling emotionally before we can move ahead to tap into above the line creativity and innovation, right? And so, you know, some of these board of directors are forcing, you know, creativity and we got to innovate. We got to create. You cannot innovate or be creative when you're in fear. Because the lower emotion is going to suck you down every time. And so it's, it's literally becoming more conscious. And Lisa, if you could go to the next slide. Wait, let's, let's watch. Let's do the video. Okay, guys. 
Are you, are you all with me? I hope so. So I want to show you a video that's going, thank you, Todd, that's going to anchor what I just said, okay? It's going to show you above the line, below the line. It's going to show you how your thinking and emotions create your reality. And it's going to show you storyland. It's your interpretation. So it's just a couple of minutes, but let's show that and then we'll come back and, and talk about what you can do. Location, location, location. Brought to you by the Conscious Leadership Group. Find them on the web at www.conscious.is. Animation by Graham Franks, www.grahamfranks.com. One question that conscious leaders ask themselves over and over is, where am I? To support leaders in locating themselves as they ask the question, where am I? We offer this tool, a line, a simple black line. At any moment, all leaders and all people are either above the line or below the line. Our location describes how we're being with what is occurring in our life right now. If we're above the line, we are open, curious, and committed to learning. If we are below the line, we are closed, defensive, and committed to being right. Stop right now and simply ask yourself, where am I? In this now moment, am I above the line or below the line? Typically, when people are below the line, they believe certain things about the world. For example, they believe there is not enough. It could be that there's not enough money or time or space or energy or love. People below the line also believe that their story about the situation is right. People below the line also believe that there is a threat out there. Something or someone is threatening their desire for approval, control or security. And people below the line see the situation as serious. The deeper below the line they are, the more serious things look. People below the line tend to behave certain ways as well. They tend to cling to an opinion, find fault and blame, gossip, explain, rationalize and justify, get overwhelmed, and avoid conflict or pursue conflict for the sake of winning. When people are above the line, they believe that learning and growing are more important than being right. They believe that all people and circumstances are their allies, here for their growth. They believe that from a distance, almost everything is funny. People above the line live in curiosity, listen deeply, speak unarguably, question all their beliefs, and live a life of play. Now, knowing what you know about being above or below the line, where are you? One thing to know as you consider this question, we are hardwired to go below the line. Literally, our brain is programmed to perceive threat, and when it does, a chemical cocktail courses through our veins, and we go below the line. This reaction was designed to help us survive in the presence of a real threat to our physical survival. An issue for modern day leaders is that often our brains can't tell the difference between a threat to our physical survival and a threat to our ego or identity. We react and get defensive when we experience a threat to our ego. So in many ways, being below the line is natural and normal. But when we are below the line, we're not in a state, literally brain state, of high creativity, collaboration, innovation, and relational connection. We're simply trying to survive. Leaders today can't thrive if they're in survival mode. So the first activity of conscious leadership is location, location, location. In this now moment, where am I? Telling ourselves and others the truth about our current location begins the great conversation. Okay, so so if you all were to say, you know, kind of like where you are in your life right now, would you say you're more above the line or below the line? You know, and then possibly possibly you can compartmentalize right well at home i'm above but you know work but now it's all meshed into one right i mean you know we live work and i mean our professional and personal life they've just both collapsed into one good so so some so some of you are below and and that's okay don't make it wrong and others are way above that's awesome so here's what i want to talk about how the heck do you manage 
in this time of uncertainty and get through and, 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 and look at how we can be more above the line. So first of all, um, my gosh, Viktor Frankl, love, 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 love this person that was in the concentration camps for I don't know how many years. Um, wrote a great book if you want to read it, In Search of Excellence. But he has a quote that says that between the stimulus, so the stimulus is just what happened, right? So you guys all have, if you just look at your story, the fact is something happened that triggered you. So between the stimulus and the response, there's a space. And in that space, each of us has the opportunity to press pause, to press pause before we respond. Now just think about that for a minute. It's like, okay. So when something happens, my natural inclination is going to be to get triggered right? Because it's our human condition. We're, we're out for survival. The tape just said it, right? We're in survival mode most of the time. And so that's my automatic response. That's my automatic response. However, if I press pause, I don't send that scathing text back. I don't send that email. I don't yell at my spouse. I don't beep at somebody that's driving by and cutting me off. Like, just think about all the times you get triggered and you pause and you wait. And then you go to your conscious thoughts, right? Because your unconscious runs the show. So now I'm going to think a thought that's going to serve me instead of below the line thought and emotion that's going to keep me below the line. And so it's this conscious choosing. And, and Lisa, if you just wanna show the slide so that they can kind of see that concept, it's a, it's a really great slide. Um, so it's conscious choice, right? We are all at free will. And this gives you the opportunity to do what I call a pattern interrupt. And I'll, I'll tell you some ways to do pattern interrupts, but you're literally interrupting your neurological circuitry to the brain. So this is backed by neuroscience, right? So when you get triggered, which we get triggered now at least 17 times a day, you have a stress hormone, stress hormone cortisol, which is like poison that runs through your blood system and it takes you around 25 minutes to come back to equilibrium. So it's coming back to that line of neutrality. However, you're the one responsible and accountable for the interpretations you put on every experience that happens. And so if you can press pause and say, wait a minute, I'm going to consciously choose, I, I'm thinking so negatively right now, I'm going to consciously choose another thought that's going to create a different emotion. And the more you do this over and over and over again, this is what's called a pattern interrupt. And now you're starting to say, you know, I always say we create our own realities. But now you're starting to build a muscle. It's just like going to the gym. You're building a new brain circuitry muscle and new super, super highways. The neurocircuitry is literally shifting. Okay. So, you know, this, if you, if you did an MRI brain scan, you would see in 30 days that there would be new wiring going to the brain because the amygdala, which is your fight, flight, freeze response, it shrinks when you press pause, right? And right now in this pandemic, we gotta go more inside because if we go outside and we let the circumstances and conditions of our lives run the show, we're gonna be having heart attacks left and right. We're gonna get ill. We're gonna have horrible breakdown of communication. Our cultures are gonna go down the tubes. So we really have to bring this emotional intelligence into the space of our business and into our own self-awareness so that we can start self-regulating, right? So self-regulating is part of this whole emotional intelligence space. And I'm adding energy because our thoughts are energy and our emotions are energy. And we always think that our thoughts because we think it are true and they're not. It's just a thought. 
So why not think the thoughts that can feed, you know, my success, right? Okay, Lisa, um, if you go to the next slide, I'll just, I'll just take you through some of this, some of how you grow your awareness, because now I trust you all are aware of the power you have. The power you have is your free will and your conscious choice. However, we are walking through life pretty blind to it. So the first is how do I become more self-aware? Well, one, come take some of my courses at the Institute because they're fabulous. But right for now, you look at your thinking and your emotion, which always equals your current state of reality. So when I'm below the line in any situation, okay, I am going to ask myself the question, what story, and remember, what story is running my show right here? So let me give you this example back with my CFO. Okay, so I say to myself, okay, this is a story that, you know, as a CEO, one of the things that I'm not proud of, and I'm vulnerable in sharing it with you, is that sometimes I always think, oh, I hired the wrong person, even though like I'm a staffing company, that's kind of funny, but I, I sometimes will say, oh my gosh, you know, after a short amount of time, this happens, this happens, and I get the story in my head, because the story in my head is that I'm all by myself. Okay, so now you can feel sorry for me for a moment, but that's just a belief system that comes out of this negative thinking that I continue to think. So fast forward with my CFO. I noticed the story that was running in my head, and of course I'm an executive coach. So I put my coaching hat on and I said to him, listen, I have a question for you. I've asked you now around four times, <laughs> to reach out to the former CFO and you haven't done it. And so I'm just wondering what's beneath that? What's beneath that? Now notice how I'm asking the question. I'm not really asking it in blame. That's really important, right? So when we become conscious, we're going to ask different questions. So he responds and he's, and he's like, well, no, he's like, I just, you know what? You hired me to figure things out. So I feel I have to figure things out. So now he's becoming vulnerable with me because he's saying, you hired me to figure things out. So I feel you're paying me to do this. Point two, he said, is that, and you have to pay this person if I call him. And I, I, I would rather not have, that's why you hired me. So now he's sharing with me that he might feel that I would judge him if he called this. So now he's in his story and I'm in my story. Do you see how the stories kind of feed off one another and actually don't get the job done either? So I said, you know, I'd like, and he said, but I, I'm, you know, I think I can figure it out. So I said, well, I want you to take the night and I want you to just think about what I'm asking you because there's something there. There's something underneath that. And he laughed and he's like, okay. Kind of like, wow, you know, this is, this is quite a onboarding experience for me. The next day he called me. He said, you will never believe what happened. He said, he yeah, first texted me, guess what? It, it, it appears that you can teach an old dog new tricks. And he said that he talked to his wife and his wife said, honey, are you kidding me? That's totally what you do. You are always trying to figure things out instead of going and getting some help. And so he said, you know what? I'm really going to look at that. So what did he do? He called the former CFO. He got so much information. And he said, I, it was a blind spot I didn't even know. Right? So we all have these blind spots that are, make us go in storyland. And that's what you want to just question. Is this based in fact or truth? Right? And then am I above the line or below the line? And how am I influencing a shift here? So then you get to choose, am I going to let the story run me or am I going to let go of the story? Now, guys, this is the hardest part because guess what? We all want to be right about. We want to be right about everything and we want to make sure that we're right about our belief systems. Okay. You don't mess with my belief system. <laughs> and that is up for being curious and saying, I want to question everything because good leaders question everything. And good leaders are always self-reflecting to say, how can I become the better version of myself and let go of some of the stories that don't serve me anymore, right? So a story I'm letting go of is that, no, I am surrounding myself by amazing leaders that are going to grow the company. I just 
to say that instead of that I'm a victim, right? So I saw myself below the line and I'm like, this is so old. I'm onto myself and it's getting me nowhere. And so I'm going to stop being right, right? We all want to be right. Stop being right. Seek to be wrong. I say that to my husband all the time. Could you just seek to be wrong? And that would make me so happy. <laughs> so letting go of the story. Three is consciously choosing the thoughts that you serve. Being conscious, conscious, conscious of, oh my gosh. And don't beat yourself up. You know, I mean, most people think negatively and worry especially during this stressful time, right? What's going to happen? When's the next shoe going to drop? All of that. And that's just a habitual way of thinking. And so being able to really know that, wow, I get to choose the thoughts that I'm thinking and I'm going to choose the ones that are going to serve what I'm committed to, what I'm up to. Happens for companies with vision statements, right? If, you have a, if, you're, if you're frustrated right now that you have a team in your company that you feel you're not rowing in the same direction, this is a great way to ground you, ground all of you in developing similar communications so that we can all like call ourselves out, call each other out, out of love, by the way, not out of judgment, but out of saying, what do we all want for ourselves right now? So that we can get in that creative space and in that creative zone. And then the fourth is, where are you listening from? which is really a whole different training, but I like if, Lisa, can that slide come up at all or not? Oh, well, um, no, but that's okay. Just, that's okay. You, yeah, yeah, I just, I couldn't see number four, but it's where are you listening from, right? And so really knowing if you're listening to another person from below the line, you're gonna always get below the line results out of that person and out of yourself, okay? So if you're, and also like, like sometimes I'll out myself here, <laughs> Lisa will laugh, but you know, we run these Monday morning meetings for the whole company. And sometimes I get really frustrated because I'm looking at people on Zoom and I know that, you know, and they look like they're like, not like they're asleep. And I want the energy of the room to get moved even virtually, right? And so, so it's where I'm listening from so that I'm not in judgment of anybody. I don't want to judge somebody that, you know, might just not have this animated face. And so it, but it still is the art of reading the room and listening for what's not being said. How many times do you ask a colleague or you you start a meeting and you say, so let's just check in with how everyone's doing and come on, everyone goes, good. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Lie, 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 lie. You're not good, right? But we don't want to acknowledge and admit it first. And so this, this work is really in the cultural, it's really moving into what kind of cultures do we want to be accountable and responsible for creating? Because it comes from the energy of our thinking and emotions that can move a room and change some systems. And so right now we're in the middle of a system breakdown in companies and politics and economics and schools and all of these systems are breaking down for a reason. We have got to step into heightened levels of authentic leadership and authentic leadership is becoming more self-aware and managing our emotional state because our emotional state impacts and influences every single person around us. Now, let me be very clear. This does not mean that we cannot be in, you know, deep grief with what's going on. There's so much loss going on. It's moving through those emotions and naming them because when we can name our emotions, all of a sudden what happens is those emotions dissipate. And it's the best thing to do as leaders with other, with subordinates and even with entire companies is being able to name exactly how I'm feeling. And I'll give you one example. Um, one example is one of my employees was on a call because I do these calls often and he was really angry. <laughs> and he said, I am, so frustrated. Now, my heart started beating because, you know, they're all of these like 
you know, people that prospective clients on the call. And so he works for me and here he is saying he's so angry and I didn't sign up for this. And when are we going back to work? And I think this is crazy and I want a team and, oh, and I said, you know what? You are naming your emotion. And I want you to go into that meeting tomorrow. They have a meeting every Friday and name it for the system because you are the energy of what a lot of people are feeling right now. So he did that. And you know what came out of it? That team rallied to get above the line. So he named being below the line. He named his frustration and he didn't want to stay below the line. But I said, you got to go below the line and own it so that you can get above the line. You can't repress that energy or else you're going to just fail. And so when he named it, it opened up this space for the team to have an authentic conversation and agree that we all want to be back at work. So now they're, you know, they're, they're dancing with three days a week and two, you know, externally and social distancing in the office and it's actually working. But had he not stepped in to something that he was so afraid of, his own emotions. He was afraid of being below the line because it was running him and he knew he was negative and he was especially talking to me. So that's very vulnerable for him to be that way, right? But we gave him the safety to be able to name it so that he could move through it. And then that next week, he said, I've had the best week ever. So this is kind of the work in action. And I want to show, you know, kind of, I share that story just so you can see how this works in our companies. We have, to, we have to have different conversations. We have to manage the conversation in our head that's mostly negative. And then we have to manage our emotional state, which is one of the hardest things right now. Because we're, by nature, really more emotional than we've ever been. And I think all of you can agree with me on that one, right? So some of the ways, you know, I, I am an advocate um, for meditation because also meditation, if you go to the next slide, Lisa, meditation is a way that you literally develop a new relationship with your thoughts. Taking deep breaths. We don't do enough breath. We don't, we don't know how to breathe. And so when you take a breath in, your stomach expands and the air moves up through your nose and then you gently exhale out of your mouth. If you do that three times when you have this trigger or this thought that's negative and you say, whoa, 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 I'm going to do a pattern interrupt. Those three deep breaths will bring you back to a neutral place and then you get to choose and say, how do I want to proceed? One other way to engage your senses. So engaging your senses is like, wait, what if you close your eyes and you think about the sound that's closest to you, and then you think about the sound that's furthest away, or you, th or you take in what the smell is or what you're hearing, and you just go through that. That's another way to pattern interrupt. And then I talked about meditation, um, which 10 minutes of meditation a day, just 10 minutes changes your brain. Because our, our brain is like a silly putty, right? It's like Play-Doh. And it, 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 it moves and shifts. And so when we feed our thinking and we feed it with more of the intentional thinking instead of fear and worry and grief and all those low frequency energies, we're then able to shift and be living a life above the line more than below the line. Right. And when we're below the line, we're the, you know, we're again below the line. I mean, you know, I'll tell a very personal story, share it with you. I lost my, well, he would have been 24, you know, this August, but my son just, you know, almost two years ago. And uh, it would have been so easy, all of you, for me to put my head under the covers and never come out. And I thought for the longest, you know, I did. I grieved for two months, didn't go to work. I did, I shut, I just needed my space. But what came out of that was that I named my, I, I wasn't afraid of my emotions. I named my emotions. I, I live with my emotions. Like I surrendered to them. I got really upfront and close and personal with those grief emotions. And then 
there was this opportunity. There was a space created that is like, I get to choose now. Am I going to be defined by this horrible, tragic circumstance? Or am I going to choose to fuel my energy and serve humanity in this way, right? I mean, this, 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 this content comes out of my own personal journey with this work. And so I'm like, wait a minute, I can choose one or the other. Now, this doesn't mean that I don't go into a deep grief place, you know, on a regular basis. But when I go, I go. And then I come out and I, I'm tapped into such great energy that's coming to me and through me because I'm choosing to live a life that matters because we don't, life is not a dress rehearsal. So imagine if each and every one of us just said to ourselves, I'm going to choose love first, heart energy, and I'm going to choose when I get triggered to press the pause button and not respond how I normally would respond. And I'm going to start connecting more deeply with other people because I'm not going to let the conversation in my head run my show anymore because it comes from mostly a negative place. And that's the opportunity each of us has to go out and impact and influence ourselves, those around us, our companies, if you're in a department, oh my gosh. And this is why this, this, this workshop belongs in business, right? Because when we can connect the dots, everybody can start speaking from a place of connection where we're anchoring in some languaging to use so that we can support one another in, in managing our mental state, really. It's managing our mental state so we can live authentically and well with each other and humanity. So I would love to open it up if you have any questions or comments. Um, I would love, Dawn, will you, I, Dawn, you always come to meditation. I'd love just share what your, what your takeaway is. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Oh, not, not at all. No, I mean, my takeaway, you know, I come away from that. A lot of times I go in very stressed out or just all scattered um, and come away much clearer after. Much oh, you're talking clearer. about meditation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I thought that's what you were. Well, no, I was calling on you because you come to meditation. So I feel safe with you, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Yep. That too. <laughs> yeah. Both. Both yes. definitely yes. safe. Yep. That's, you know, yeah. how it. Got, definitely gotten feel safer with you, Lisa, yeah. because of that. So right, yep, right, right. Um, and and what about above the line, below the line? Do you like that concept? I do. Mm -hmm. I do. It's good. You know, I was looking at that and going, okay, you know, below on this, but on other things, you know, you can go. Or how do I get above? Yes, from being the below. Right, right. On certain <laughs> things, yeah. Yeah, and you know, when I'm below, just look at your thinking. Mm -hmm. Your thinking is making you below. And your emotions are making you below, right? And that's the automatic way of being right now. But we can shift that um, if you want to, right? If you want to, live, if you want to live a life that is, you know, really living your best. And that's really what this is about. It's like, gosh. If we only have one life to freaking live, how can I bring my whole self to life and work, right? I mean, that's why the Institute opened because it really was an Institute for me because I was miserable. <laughs> you know, I was a mother of four and not doing anything well and feeling like a loser. Who wants to feel like that? You know, so then doing this work, I started saying, hey, I can feel good any moment despite the circumstances and conditions. And that's the power we all have. And what's greatly needed right now in leadership, the suffering, you all know it, you know? What do you think, Corinne? Is it Corinne or Corinne? She's muted. Mutes, double muted. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, Everybody struggles with emotions, and you can't very well leave your emotions at the door every day at work, um, despite the request to leave everything at the door when you walk in. 
I think it's the ethical part of being a leader in an organization. So I, I love this and I can't wait to bring it back to my organization and, and show them it's possible to really dive deep and approach it in a different fashion, especially during this awful pandemic. So, Yes. And I love that you said that because it's like, it's almost like we're forced into this space because of the pandemic, but see, mm -hmm. you know, I look at this pandemic and I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. So how can I, as leader, as CEO of my people become a better leader for it? And it is, you know, it is this naming and, connecting at a deeper level with people as humans, right? Because mm -hmm. we're things first and then we have a job to do. <laughs> the job will always be there, but you have to make sure you take care of the people first so they can succeed. If they're taken care of, then they'll give you 110% every time. So this is the point. This is the point, right? So it's like everyone needs a bit more flexibility. We need a bit more vulnerability. We need to be more authentic. We need mm -hmm. to what we're feeling or it's going to run the show and so the more we can do this and model the behavior the psychological safety will grow and your cultural intelligence of your organizations will become so rich it just will happen yeah oh yeah. did someone want yeah there was just a request in the chat to put up this slide again so oh, here good. it is okay yeah and and you you can put any words above and below, right? Any emotion you have. I mean, there's so many of them, but we just picked, you know, ones that kind of scream a bit right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kip, I'd love to say, um, share this with you. I attended a session um, a couple weeks ago through our payroll company. They did a big conference. And just this kind of goes along with what you're talking about now. They showed, um, the speaker showed a sign that's in a hospital. Yes. And the sign says, Please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Your words matter, your behaviors matter, our patients and our teams matter. Take a slow, deep breath and make sure your energy is in check before entering. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I could have written that. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's, exactly. Yeah. That's why. I, <laughs> but this is the point. It's like your, your behavior creates your experience and your experience directly ties to your emotions, right? And so we have got to be conscious of how we think, act, and feel at all times. It's called, by the way, metacognition, right? It's being responsible and accountable for our energy. And just imagine, like, if, we're, if, we, all, if we leave this call, and I don't care, like, all 30 of you, if you, if you just gave yourselves a 30-day challenge to say, I'm going to be managing my energy. And when I'm off, I'm going to just name it. And I'm going to say, what am I thinking and feeling? And I'm going to choose a thought that's going to be a bit better. It, there's more work, obviously, to be done with this. I don't want to make it out to be Pollyanna um, because a lot of the retreats that I run support people to create the sustainability of this, right? So, you know, it's kind of like we want to read a book, you know, we all go out, go, go out and get those self-help books, right? And, but then you put it on your bedstand, it's like, well, that was so great, but what do I, how do I put it into my life, right? So this is a discipline that if you want to build the muscle for yourself, for your people, for your team, for your firm, for your family, it takes something, but I will say, just reach out to me because I'm here to support each and any one of you um, and serve you in a way that is going to really up your game, right? Because I think that we all have this incredible opportunity now to learn, learn more together. So anyone else? Okay. Yes. Any other questions or comments for Kip? Um, if Lisa, you can hear me okay. Yeah, Lisa will put in chat. So one of the things I do want to invite all of you to is that I do, on, I don't know if anyone else, but I do run community meditation every Thursday at 10 a.m. Believe me, you don't, there, You, I don't request that you, I mean, I'd like you to have your camera on, but then when we meditate, 
It's very safe. And it's a great way to develop a new relationship with your thoughts. So that's one. And then we do run workshops and we do customized stuff and we do coaching. We do all of this fun stuff. So do look us up and contact me um, or Lisa if you want more information. We would love to help you. Great. Kip, thank you so much. Um, you know, kind of in closing here, you know, I was simply moved by your comments, um, by, by your vulnerability, your raw emotion, uh, sharing personal stories. Um, as I kind of walk away here, I'm sure others you know the whole acronym REAL, and I believe we just got to the E. So and I don't think we're done with you. There's an R, and there's an A, and there's an L. So I don't think we're done with you. We're not so even, just, we're, we're on the surface of the E. <laughs> and you know what? We have to figure out collectively, you know, how do we bring more to, to the organization? Um, one of the things I will share with the group before uh, folks jump off is I know in the world that I operate in, uh, the most successful people, um, and I, I talk to a lot of them, I, I surround myself with them, they talk about energy. Energy, energy, energy. And it, 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 the comment that was just made about the hospital, or you name it, energy is a big piece here. You talk about the conscious leadership. You validated something for me, which is 85% of thoughts are negative. And I think if we have a reality that, that that exists, I think we can then kind of work through some of the things that you're talking about. So um, today was just terrific energy and uh, an awareness above the line, below the line. And I uh, cannot thank you enough, cannot thank Lisa enough for orchestrating. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful webinar. And my hope and expectation is that we get to see you and your organization a heck of a lot more after today. So on behalf of the organization, on behalf of Alera, thank you so much for joining us. You were simply terrific. Great. Thanks, Todd. And have a great uh, rest of week and weekend, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody. Bye, all. Thank you.